and welcome to Zip Over to Zach's. My name is Zach Polanski and I'm the Green Party third London Assembly candidate on the London list. Mm. I'm supporting the work of our amazing Green Assembly members, Sean Berry and Caroline Russell. If you haven't seen the show before, we take big uh, global subjects and turn them into relatable issues. Now, a lot of the time we talk about very London specific issues, but actually today we're gonna to be talking about something that's much more national. And in fact, I think increasingly a global problem in lots of different countries. Before we get there though, I just wanna talk about something that's happened in the news this week that um, is quite obvious to talk about. And news just released shows that the six richest people in the UK um, control more wealth than the poorest 13 million people. Now it's such an obvious thing to say, but this is not fair not sustainable and we absolutely need systemic change. We've talked a lot on the show about the uh, transferable moments between um, environmental justice and social justice and we absolutely need to make sure that these two things are both being dealt with. and this kind of huge gap in income inequality and the lack of social mobility is causing huge problems. But then there's a second part to it which does link to our subject today and that's about the people in power. When you think about Dominic Cummings and Barnard Castle, Boris Johnson said that Dominic Cummings was following the instincts of every parent. He was acting uh, reasonably and legally. But then just a few days ago with the refugees clinging to a boat for their lives, he said that they should face you know, the, the full force of the law and that we needed to send these people back. This is not something that is fair or sustainable and we need to make sure that we're holding those in power to account. Now, one of the ways I really believe that we can hold people to account is through democratic electoral systems. But a big problem in the UK is just for a long time, in fact, certainly in our lifetimes, we've never had a fair voting system. So when people are voted in, they can rarely be held accountable and we have a real culture of safe seats. Now, Make Votes Matter are a campaign for proportional representation in the House of Commons. They've been going a few years and one of my favorite people in politics, in fact, I always talk about how hard Sean and Caroline work in the assembly, this is one of the few people in politics that I know works just as hard. That's Kleiner Jordan. She's the co-founder of Make Votes Matter. Delighted that she's here to join us uh, today for this 20 minute show. So good morning, Kleiner. Good morning, Zach. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Really excited to have you on. And I guess the first obvious question for anyone who's about to switch off is they think this is all a bit geeky. Um, what is proportional representation? <laughs> um, well, we try to make it as not geeky as possible and avoid talking about the mathematics of voting systems because most people don't really want to know that. They just want to know that the way that they vote will actually be re reflected in Parliament. So the, the simple way of describing it is that seats match votes. So each party gets vote that their vote share translated directly into seats. So if they get 20% of the vote, they get 20% of the seat seats. This all sounds much fairer already. Um, and why is it taking so long? Why do we keep talking about this, but it's just not happening? Well, it's the age old thing of trying to wrest pay power away from those in power. They generally don't want it to happen and they cling on for as long as they can. So um, we've gradually moved closer to democracy in this country and that hasn't just been some kind of magical gentle process. It's been through people organizing and standing up and saying enough is enough we want our voices heard. So we now have some kind of semblance of a democracy, but in some ways that's actually quite dangerous because as far as I'm concerned, we don't have real democracy. If you've got a situation where a party who's got a minority of the vote, so most people voted for other parties, and yet that one party with the minority of the vote has all of the power, then clearly all of those other people aren't being represented and the country is not being run in their best interests. It's being run in the interests of a smaller group. Um, I really love that answer, particularly when you said it's not being run in their best interest, because I think conversations about proportional representation too often can become about how it favours different parties over other parties or other machinations. Of it. But I really like that at its fundamental heart, this is about equal votes. Um, I think an example actually is in my constituency, so I run in cities of London and Westminster, and this isn't a Brexit discussion, don't worry, don't turn off, everyone's had enough of Brexit. But actually myself, the candidate for the Lib Dems and the candidate for Labour, we're all quite united in terms of that we wanted to have another referendum or some form of um, accountability for Brexit. Yet the three of us essentially split the vote, you know, different ways, and then the one person who supported Brexit on the ballot paper won, and then it's voted through Boris Johnson's hard Brexit. Or whatever Brexit you want to call it. 
Um, so I think that's, you know, a case in action. I can see people are putting um, stuff on the chat already and just to encourage you more to do that. So if you have comments or you have any questions for Kleiner at all, then please do put them in the chat. Um, so what I really wanted to do, Kleiner, was what I call myth busting. I did think about changing costumes and every time you came back to me, I was going to dress up as a different person and, and come up with another reason not to have PR. But I thought maybe that's a bit much. But I do want to do some kind of quick fire and what about this to you? And I guess the most obvious one that I hear all the time is will this not let in extremists? Do we really want Nigel Farage in Parliament? So, I mean, this is a commonly asked question, of course, and what proportional representation does is actually make sure that each party is represented in proportion to the way the people want them represented. So if the people want a party to have 2% of the seats, then they'll have 2% of the seats. And so if you're saying that that's an extremist party, and it is worth actually mentioning, some people call the Greens extremists, which I would really disagree with, but the, it's about stuff that's on the fringe. So stuff that people don't think of as mainstream that they call extremes a way of delegitimizing them. And actually all viewpoints are valid. They just need to be heard in proportion to the, everyone else's viewpoints. We need the, the wisdom of the many to create a whole which actually represents what everybody wants. Um, so yes, you will have some small parties but actually that isn't a problem because they're not going to be able to outvote all of the others and vote in really extreme laws, as it were. Um, and actually we get the reverse effect with first past the post, our antiquated non-democratic voting system. You actually get situations where the extremists, if we're gonna call them that, take over the whole of government. So because the Tories were worried about, first of all, the influence of UKIP, which then became effectively the Brexit party and they, the people running it moved across to a different organisation. They, they were trying to avoid those people getting into Parliament. And so they made their uh, manifesto more in line, I don't want to say extreme, but more in line with first UKIPs and then, then the Brexit parties. And it's those people from the Conservative Party who now are running the government. So you could actually say first past the post lets in the extremists. I mean, we could also look at Donald Trump in the States and many would call him an extremist and are just shocked that that person could be running the United States. So I, I think it's actually the opposite. I think that's such a good point, especially about Donald Trump. I think it's not that well known that actually Donald Trump lost the popular vote by three million more votes, but first past the post system has now blessed his presence on the world as, as president. Yeah. And um, I guess another thing we often hear, particularly on social media, is didn't we already vote for this in 2011 and it was decisively voted down? <laughs> no. <laughs> so when we first came into existence um, uh, in 2015, that was kind of one of the first hashtags that we were using. AV is not PR. So the referendum in 2011 was on the alternative vote. Um, and it's another non-proportional system like First Past the Post. Um, it's slightly better than First Past the Post um, in that you end up via, via vote transferals with people representing areas who had people's second or third preference votes, um, making up their vote to be more than 50% of the vote. Whereas the current situation, like I described with the Conservatives, um, having, I think it's 43% or something, you probably remember the number better than me. Um, they, they end up with all of the power when they don't actually have everyone's um, vote. Um, so AV uh, could be seen as an improvement, but there was a huge campaign against it. And uh, what we see around the world is that where there are referendums without kind of prior education or engagement, um, the people with the money who don't want the new voting system, put out loads and loads of adverts, which as we know with politics in general, money really sways elections and, and referendums. And so they're, they're not actually fair ways of assessing anything. No, that all makes sense. And I think you got the numbers spot on. As someone uh, like yourself who campaigned hard for the AV uh, referendum, can confirm that on the ground, we're hearing lots of people say, no, I support proportional representation, but actually this form isn't going to be any more helpful and we need to get the actual electoral reform we need rather than, as Nick Clegg called it, a miserable little compromise. Yeah. Um, this idea of strong and stable government, 
uh, obviously Theresa May <laughs> has used that as a catchphrase now that you can't really say it and be taken seriously. But is there not something there about the fact that coalitions do make politics messier? So in this country, coalition is kind of a dirty word um, because of the way our politics works. And it's because the, uh, the politicians aren't used to having to compromise. And actually compromise and cooperation, collaboration are really good things. It's, it's actually about hearing other people and coming to consensus rather than saying, no, we're going to do what we want to do and you're just going to have to go along with it. Um, so strong and stable. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a very, very funny phrase these days. Um, they, they didn't exactly do their strong and stable that they were promising, um, not to be too partisan, but I mean, that was just what I witnessed. <laughs> um, and so actually with proportional representation, because everyone's represented, the balance of the way the people want their parliament made up varies more gently over time, generally. So you don't have these wild swings between left and right. So in our system, you, it's a two party system. So you either get the Conservatives or Labour in this country. And in other countries with first past the post, you get a, a similar effect, with slightly different name parties. And there are very few countries that actually use first past the post. Most, most democracies use proportional representation. So in our country, we swing to the right, and they try to undo a load of work that the left did. And then we swing to the left and they try to undo a load of the work that the right did. Um, and it's also worth mentioning that the vast majority of the time, the conservatives get into power. And I'm talking, I think, um, before the last election, it was 14 out of the last 15 elections, the conservatives win power. When actually the, the vast majority of the time, the, uh, the majority of the country are voting for parties to the left of the Tories, so more progressive parties. So we're getting the opposite outcome in our politics to what people are voting for. And it's infuriating. <laughs> you answered very calmly, but it's infuriating. And um, just once again, to encourage you to put questions in the chat, because Heiner is literally like a vast knowledge source about proportional representation. Um, talking of which, um, every answer you've given so far, I could have probably given a similar answer. There's one question that it's always a bit more detailed than I know, so I'm excited to ask you. The three eyes, it's Israel, Italy, and Ireland. They all have proportional representation, but they kind of have messy political situations, I'd say especially Italy in, in, in that group. Um, how do you respond to people when they say we don't want that kind of chaos here? So, yeah, it is, it's interesting how the, the kind of the three countries people raise as examples as objections to PR <laughs> will start with an I or they, they normally start with an I. Um, each of those countries, Italy, Israel and Ireland, have quite specific situations going on, as probably most people um, watching this uh, would immediately be able to think of. Um, and the one which is kind of slightly less obvious maybe is Italy and I had a conversation with uh, somebody from Italy talking about proportional representation and working towards better democracy which is also their field and they were explaining that actually there are kind of checks and balances as it were that are built into the constitution that make sure that nobody has too much power which actually makes and, and I, I can't claim to be an expert on this at all but um, they, they were saying it makes for more unstable government, but please don't <laughs> quote me too much on this. But that's that's part of my understanding of what's going on there. I mean, I think the other thing is like, politics is massively volatile all over the world at the moment. We're going through a huge global shift, um, and yeah, things desperately need to change. But I mean, just very briefly to touch on. Ireland and Israel, kind of the history of conflicts and the different peoples uh, or yeah, different religions in, in those countries plays a big part in what's going on with them. And in Israel as well, they have a form of proportional representation, which we would never advocate, um, which uh, doesn't allow enough, enough local representation. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. For anyone watching at home, there's lots of different systems of proportional representation. I'm not gonna get into it now because it gets kind of very, very technical. And um, actually, though, maybe it's worth asking about what a Make Votes Matter are doing in terms of a good systems agreement rather than getting into the detail. Yeah. 
So as I mentioned earlier, we try not to get into the detail of voting systems, but because everyone always wants to talk about that and it's completely understandable, people want to understand what the new thing would be and there are different ways of doing it. Um, we, we decided to run the, this good systems agreement project um, over a couple of years, basically, working with um, representatives from all of the parties and loads of different organizations and public figures um, and our local groups and other um, democracy local groups around the country to distill best practice as understood through all sorts of processes from around the world. So um, uh, commissions and um, so there have been uh, official processes that have happened in places like Canada and quite recently in Wales and previously in the UK. So looking at all of those kind of big <laughs> weighty documents and distilling down best practice for proportional representation from those and what we've ended up with is kind of less than an A4 sheet of 10 um, uh, key factors that you would have in a good voting system. But the key thing about this document is that it's also saying that we think the best system for the UK should be chosen by a, um, a deliberative citizen-led process like a citizen's assembly because we don't think it should be the politicians who get to decide the uh, voting system that they get voted in on because then you inevitably end up with some kind of conflicts of interest and people wanting to make sure that it works for them, them or their party. So um, all of these uh, parties, so basically all of the opposition parties aside from Labour have signed it and are in the alliance. Um, we've got a whole load of Labour MPs who are also completely behind this cause and working hard to change the voting system because they realise that um, having a fair voting system, everyone's voice being heard, means that we end up with more equality. And obviously that's a big aim of the Labour Party, bringing about more kind of social and economic equality. Fantastic. Um, we're going to move on to the final few moments in the second talk about um, citizens assemblies. I want to get my favourite fact in there though which it comes from a Labour Party report that was commissioned with Make Votes Matter called the Peterloo Report, which you can find out online, that countries with proportional representation on average have 18% less carbon emissions. So there's lots of other knock-on effects, um, progressive effects from having a fairer system, which makes sure people are represented. And I love that fact, so I wanted to get it in there. Um, so you just mentioned citizens' assemblies briefly. Would you mind elaborating what a citizens' assembly is and what it can be useful for, other than just choosing voting systems? Yeah, absolutely. I do just want to add to what you were saying, because I think that is really important to get in. Basically, there's loads of evidence from political science from around the world over many decades that proportional representation results in better social, environmental and economic outcomes. So it basically makes all sorts of stuff better because it, people's interests are represented. And like Zach saying, um, that there's, there's evidence about having fewer carbon emissions, um, about countries ratifying the Kyoto Protocol faster, um, about uh, countries having better environmental legislation to protect their environment. Um, so it, it, it's, it's not just about the numbers and it's not just about whether it's fair for parties. But I will move on to the Citizens' Assembly question. <laughs> so as I said, um, that the Good Systems Agreement, which we brokered, uh, basically is advocating a Citizens' Assembly to choose the voting system. Um, and just really briefly, citizens' assemblies aren't just a, a bunch of random people who are kind of chucked in a room and make a decision. They're actually given all of the information by a kind of broad range of experts. So they, they have all of the facts in front of them and they have the time and space to deliberate carefully. Um, and it's facilitated neutrally so that they can come to their own conclusions together and come to consensus or as close to consensus as possible about questions. And so these can obviously be used for all sorts of things. And um, Extinction Rebellion, for example, has been uh, campaigning to uh, have a citizens assembly um, for the climate crisis, um, which I absolutely agree should be happening. But um, I think uh, some people think you can just kind of replace all of government with citizens assemblies. And like countries have been governed in that way in the past, but from where we are now with an undemocratic voting system, 
for me, proportional representation is the next big step towards real democracy, to bringing in the other kinds of better democracy like citizens' assemblies that we need to do, to getting rid of the House of Lords, which is completely undemocratic. Um, and so without that kind of PR as the keystone to hold all of the rest of it together, we're not going to be able to get to that more advanced kind of democracy. And just uh, just before my final question, Tarek's asked the question in the chat, so I just want to put it to you, which is, in the UK, sovereignty goes from the Crown to the Parliament, not to the people. How would real citizens' assembly be possible? Given I couldn't quite hear the last bit. How would real citizens' assemblies be possible, given this, that the UK sovereignty is from the Crown to the Parliament, not to the people? Well, I think that's exactly what I was just pointing at. Like, so much needs to be changed about the structure of the way our politics works, and I'm definitely saying politics rather than democracy, um, before we can get to the point where sovereignty is actually held in a different way, is created in a different way. Like, I mean, it coming from the crown is a very antiquated, undemocratic way to do democracy. So um, if, if we can get PR in place, we can start to shift some of these old antiquated um, relics Absolutely. I'd just add even implicit in Tarek's question is the idea that um, Parliament and the people aren't the same thing, which they're not because they're not really representing us, but actually in a proper democracy, then those two things would be pretty interchangeable. But just yeah. Yeah. Um, so my final question is, um, I've just signed up uh, to more ways to get involved with Make Makes Matter. Um, how did I do that, Kanye? And what can people watch? <laughs> So um, I'll just very briefly, very briefly lay out the, the, the theory of change that we work towards in Make Votes Matter. Um, so there are basically three strands to the campaign. So you need to have one of the two big parties on board. So we've been working very hard, a lot of legwork over the last few years to change Labour Party policy and making huge progress. Um, I won't go into that in too much detail now, but that, that's looking really positive. The next strand you, you already referenced earlier, um, the, the parties working on the Good Systems Agreement and part of the alliance, the Make Breaks Matter Alliance. And so that's kind of spearheading the national movement towards proportional uh, representation. And then the third is the grassroots. So we need a national upswell of people taking action and making their voices heard, going out on the streets and um, saying, look, we, we want real democracy now. And so the next big thing that's happening in that strand is the one that you're talking about, which is our annual Demand Democracy Day, which will be on the 22nd of August. And that's going to be a really fun one this time. Um, it's uh, inspired by the Lewis local group who went and took photos of themselves in front of local landmarks. And so what we're encouraging people around the country to do on the 22nd of August is to go and take photos of themselves with a Make Votes Matter sign or something for proportional representation and um, then share it on social media. Uh, so the, the hashtags demand democracy and then you can at Make Votes Matter. Um, but if you, if you want to find out how to do that, just go, just Google Make Votes Matter, you'll find the website and it'll be on the front page there for you to, to get involved. Beautiful, thank you so much. Um, Kleiner, thank you for everything you're doing for proportional representation. You're literally dedicating your life to it with grace, vigour, grit, determination, and it's really going to make a difference, so thank you. Um, I think I've just finished by saying, um, people often say during elections when you talk about proportional representation, what, that's your priority, you know, we're worried about poverty, or we're worried about policing, or particularly right now we're worried about health, and of course we're worried about those things too, but I think if coronavirus has shown anything, it's shown that we need the right people in power who do represent the people and aren't representing their own interests. So proportional representation is that fundamental keystone on which everything else rests. So although it can sound a bit technical sometimes, I think Kleiner always does a wonderful job of making it real, making it concrete, and for us all to understand how it affects our lives. So please do check out Make Those Matter and go join in the National Action Day. Um, hope you're all surviving the heat. There are thunderstorms coming. I don't know why I've become a weather reporter all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have a great end of the week and I'll see you all next Tuesday. Thank you very much, goodbye. Thank you, Zach, bye-bye. <laughs> Victoria Line.